on everybody so today we're going to try something completely different we have like, dabbled a little bit before with the idea of uh, vlogging our uh, daily blogs so today we're going to give that a go this is like my first time in front of the camera for a while the last time i did this i was with my daughter and we're messing about with some the beard struggle um bombs and tonics and stuff so this is completely new today so let's see how things go so I want to talk about some of the most popular blogs that I've done over the time while I've been here with the beard struggle. So today's topic at home, we're going to talk about five bad beard habits that you probably don't even realise that you're doing. Now this proved to be quite a popular topic when I did discuss about it. And um, there's a lot of people debating um, some of my ideas. And um, that's fine, that's what it's all about. I mean, one beard is not like the other beard. There's a very, very difference. There's a very big difference in how beards grow and how we, how we choose to care for them. But um, this, these these are the tips that I pointed out, which people do make daily when they have a beard, and the probably don't realise they're doing it half the time. So the first thing that we do is we tend to, whether we're sat thinking or whatever and what we're doing throughout the day, we tend to touch the beard quite a lot, which again is absolutely fine. But what we tend to do while we're doing this, without even realising that we're actually doing it, I do this myself pretty much every day, is we tend to feel out the coarse hairs, the hairs that um, just don't feel right in comparison to the rest of your beard. And then what we tend to do then is we tend to single that hair out and then we normally tend to pull it out. And again, this is without giving it much of a thought. You just find a hair, got like a little knot in it or something and you decide to pull it out. Obviously, this is this is um, something that all of us tend to do, if, if not we have done in the past. Um, but for obvious reasons, it's a very, very bad idea. The main reason is because if you do it on a long-term basis, you're going to end up with bold patches within your beard. Now, people do tend to struggle filling out this spot here. Which, to be fair, before I started using the beard shawl, this was a lot thinner in comparison to the rest of my beard. But as you can see, I've even got a scar there. Look, and it's even growing over the scar now, which is pretty fantastic. And again, that's just by looking after it, not trying to pluck away it too much. Um, and using the right product and looking after it. So that's the first tip that I'd give. Just try not to like pull away at it if you don't need to. I mean, you never really need to pull away at your beard. But it's a very, very easy habit to fall into. Right, the second one that we that I'd like to suggest, and again, it's just this is how I do things. I'm not saying I'm right 100%, but this is how I choose to look after my beard. But the key is to keep your beard clean without overwashing it. Now you might say, well, how on earth if I'm working a dirty job, let's say I work on a building site or I work where somewhere where I'm around dirt daily, how on earth am I meant to keep the beard clean whilst not overwashing it? Now when I say overwash, I mean in using certain certain products and chemicals. We at the Beard Struggle sell conditioner and shampoo, which works an absolute charm, but don't use, don't overuse it. If you use it on a daily basis, you're going to start finding, you might have a bit of a reverse effect. It might start actually drying out your beard. Now, it's not because it's full of any nasty chemicals as such. It's just down to the fact that constant washing, even of your hair on your head, if you overwash, not that I have to worry about that, but if you overwash these areas, eventually you're going to, you're going to strip that hair of its natural oil. Now your beard works very similar to the hair on your head on this on this case, where it produces its own sort of like moisture, if that makes sense. You might have to have a beard to understand this, but um, without you putting any oils on, it does dry out obviously, but if you're maintaining it with oils and balms and tonics and everything else that you're using, you're going to have a slight moisture to, a moisture to your beard hair pretty much throughout the day, and that's what the beard oil is for. But if you, if you wash your beard on a daily basis with like shampoo and conditioners, more so the wrong sort of shampoos and conditioners. Um, whenever I first started out growing out a beard, I just grew like a chin strap. I didn't have any of this around my chin, around my lips, sorry, or anything like that. It was just literally that bit there. And um, I used to shower two, three times a day with the job I was doing at the time. And I found I was using just everyday shampoo that I'd use on my head. Now, it might seem like a good idea at the time. You think, yep, yeah, it does the job for my hair on my head. Again, not that I have to worry about that. But um, if you use them sort of chemicals, which are not designed for beard hair, they're just not. Now, if you decide to use them on your beard, you're going to find very fast, you're going to start drying out your beard rapidly quick. Now, more so with like anti-dandruff sort of shampoos and stuff. They're the ones that really do. I mean, I found on my beard line here, after shampooing um, for a couple of weeks just with my beard strap, I found that my skin underneath was very irritated. Almost as if like I haven't washed the products out properly. Now, I know for what I did wash the product out properly, but then I quickly learned that the chemicals that were inside shampoo for the hair on your head are a completely different calibre to the stuff that you use that is specifically made for your beard. So the biggest thing to do there is obviously not use them products. Use things that are specifically designed for beards. Now, I know for certain people, especially here in the UK, that's a little bit easier said than done. 
Um, one of my pet hates at the moment, I've talked about this in the blog too, is going to a store, going to the men's grooming aisle, and there's literally every single product you can possibly think of to encourage you to shave. From shaving foams, shaving gels, uh, moisturizers for your faces, it's questionable. The amount of products that are out there now, you literally, we're literally on par with the ladies. Now, if you're a pretty boy, I apologize, but half of these products are really not needed. We don't need, we don't need moisturizer for our face. We're men for crying out loud. We're not meant to have pretty boy skin. We're meant to be a bit rough and rugged in comparison to our ladies. Now, so for me, it is it is a tricky task to find products that to maintain a beard. I mean, there's an advert that's just come out over here for a role, a popular uh, popular brand of razor, and they've bought this electric thing, which can pretty much the same in the advert. I could take it straight to this big beard that I've got, and I'll be like, I can get a clean shave out of it without any kind of gels or anything like that. Just literally electric razor, just and hack it away, and I'll have a clean shaven face. Now, why on earth these beard product companies or these beard destroying companies don't decide to work alongside people that actually like to look after a beard and maintain a beard and produce branded stuff that could go alongside their murdering devices? I'll never know. But the truth is, beard care products are very hard to find. But thankfully, that's why here at The Beard Struggle we have you covered. We've got a shop which has everything from beard combs to beard tonics to beard balms to beard oils, shampoos, conditioners that are all very, very handmade hand and closely inspected to work and do exactly what it's meant to do and look after your beard. So any products that you'll buy from us, you will find you, you very quickly as well. I mean, I've, I've tried numerous brands and numerous beard oils and everything else in between when I very first started growing out my beard. I quickly learned how beneficial the Beard Struggle products really are. Now, I'm not here to try and sell your product, I'm really not. I'm just, I'm, I do write for the Beard Struggle, obviously, and I'm trying to do this video thing, but first and foremost, I was a customer. Um, I was fortunate enough to win an Instagram competition to receive a starter pack, which got sent to me. Again, I took it with a bit of pinch of salt. I thought, that's lovely, on the shelf it goes for a bit, because I had so many other products to try out beforehand. Now, I found with any other products, they're either very, very overpowering on the scent and the flavour. For example, I use an orange one, which smelling in a little tiny bottle was lovely. Uh, I'm not going to obviously name names of other companies because I'm not here to bash anybody really. Everyone just, everyone's out there trying to do what they're doing. But it's a lovely smell, like a, almost like a citrusy smell. It's lovely inside of the bottle. Now, I splashed that on one morning before my day. And um, within a space of an hour, it was literally giving me a headache. The smell was so intense. Um, a lovely idea to have orange. Shush, laptop. A lovely idea to have orange orange smell on your face but to have that all day and to be, to be quite a strong scent I quickly regretted that so I went home that day and I politely threw that stuff in the bin and then I looked on the shelf and then my beard struggle care kit was there so I gave that a go I kid you not it's the best stuff you'll probably find out there now I'm not saying other beard companies out there that are producing oils and balms and all the rest of it are not doing good too but I can speak from personal experience the beard struggle for me is the only brand I'll use right now so that's 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 key don't overwash with the wrong sort of products and make sure you use the right sort of products when you're caring for your beard. Now, combing your beard, this is the next tip. Now this one is highly controversial because I've spoken about this a few times and I've had a few people going, well, I, I don't do things how you do it and my beard's absolutely fine. Now, I can't stress this enough. What might work for one bearded man might be the complete opposite for another. Beards are never the same. Mine grows, as you can see. It's quite, it's quite crazy. I mean, I've tamed it down with the beard struggle. Tonic today. That's the one I use on the daily basis. Great stuff. Smells fantastic. I know you can't smell it through the camera, but it's a great, great product. That's the one I go to every day because basically the tonics or the balms tend to add more control to your beard. Now, oils work in the same sort of fashion, but balms, they tend to, if you if like me, if I wake up in the morning and I'm having a crazy beard day, my beard would be like... I'd be like a hissing dinosaur, just be out here out of control, it's crazy. Whereas the tonic and the balms just give you a little bit more control and get it into shape. Which as you can see, it looks it looks good today, I'm happy with it today. And it's all down to the product. So, this is where I come back to the combing side of things. Now, people tend to brush the beard in the morning when they're getting ready, after they've had a shower or whatever. Brush it down and then away they go. Throughout the day, they might carry a pocket comb with them, which I do, which unfortunately I haven't got on me to show you on the video, but I used it in the last video. And then I comb through throughout the day as and when needed. Now, it's really, really easy to fall in a habit of combing, over combing your beard. 
Now you might think to yourself, is it really possible to overcome a beard? Now I can again speak from a personal experience, I can actually say yes it is very easy to overcome. And um, again, even, even if you are overcoming, what's the real damage? What are you actually doing to your beard? What, what's the harm in overcoming it? If I comb it three times one day and six times the next, what's the real damage I'm doing here? Well, for me, I found if I'm, when I overcomb the beard, I ended up snagging it a lot more. Now, if you've combed your beard and you've got a decent length beard, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. You'll meet, you'll meet like, a, like a tangled spot, whether it be first thing in the morning or later on in the evening, and you'll tend to go and you'll snag it, and then you pull it through. And then what that does, you might think, oh, I've pulled it through, it's fine. But what you're essentially doing there is you're, you could be pulling hairs out while you're overcombing it, for one. The second thing I, I've, I've figured out that it's, it tends to add to the split end effect. Now, split ends are inevitable. You, you can look after your beard. You can minimise the risk of split ends by looking after it. But um, you're still gonna you're still gonna experience split ends. Hence why trimming. I trim once a month now. I go to my local barber, my beard barber, and he takes care of things. Takes out all the split ends, adds more shape to it, and I trust the guy on there a couple of times, and I trust him to do so. Now, obviously, you can do this at home. We're just taking off the split ends and stuff to add more control. And, and essentially, what you're doing then is you're giving your beard more space to grow. Because if you've got a split end, obviously, just, you don't need to explain, I don't need to talk like you're a kid, but a split end is essentially a split hair. So if that hair continuously grows, all that's doing, you're not really getting any length from that. It's just going to do its own little thing and it's going to go separate ways, which again, is going to split right the way down the centre and straight the way back to your face, which in turn is going to damage your beard hair. And then in turn of that, it's going to do, damage your beard length overall. So overcombing for me, I think from personal experience, it can add to the split end effect. And you don't want that. That's just going to add more problems later on down the line. Now, the next and last topic I want to talk about, which is something I discussed yesterday in the blog, which a lot of people are very grateful for me doing. But um, it's using these nasty things. Now, I don't use these. These are my wife's. GHDs. Not, they don't have to be GHDs. I mean, any form of hair straightener. Now, many people have seen just recently on YouTube giving advice and tips on how to use them on your beard on, the, on a low setting. For me personally, I would not go near my beard with that. Now, the reason being, read yesterday's blog, so I did speak about it in much more detail. But again, if you think about it, your beard is not maintained, your beard is not designed to maintain that sort of heat. If you're putting a double-sided plate onto your beard and essentially pulling it down to straighten that hair, you're, adding, you're, you're whacking some serious heat through that beard. Now, that can be on the lowest setting that your hair straightener or hair dryer can do, it's still going to put heat that is really not needed on your beard, which again, falls back into the split ends, falls back into the drying out of the beard. So just, just don't do it. Just really think about it. What I tend to do is leave my beard a little bit dry, a towel dry, I don't go crazy with a towel. A towel dry like that after my shower. I brush, I put on a product on, leaving it a little tiny bit damp, then I put a product on, and then I gently comb down to get the shape I'm after. Now again, that's it for today for this vlog. But again, this is only my, my experiences. I can only give you advice that I follow myself. I'd never give you something I wouldn't dare do myself. But for hair dryers and hair straighteners, don't do it. So thank you very much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you like it, do let me know. Hopefully there'll be some more coming very soon. And until next time, peace.